now joining me here on World News Tonight to discuss the developments in U.S. presidential elections and in the European Commission as the top jobs are still being doled out is Michał Kobosko, Polish MEP from Renew Europe and Poland 2050. Hello, sir. Thank you very much for joining Hello. us. Hello. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the United States. There are reports uh, coming out that Joe Biden may tender his resignation, not from the, necessarily the presidency, but he may drop out of the race to allow an open field of candidates uh, as it's becoming clearer and clearer that he may not be able to serve as another president. Um, so looking at this, who are some good contenders, in, in your opinion, uh, that might be able to fill the void and would be able to compete with uh, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance? Look, you have to start with saying very frankly that it will be up to President Biden whether he wants to move on or he wants to resign from the, from the race. That will be his sole decision. He's the decision maker here. Not his family, not his party, but himself. Definitely, there's a rising pressure right now that we see in the whole of the United States uh, and also inside the Democratic Party, pushing him to at least consider resigning at that point. There's not much time left, actually, because uh, in the middle of uh, mid-August, we're going to have the convention, the Democratic Party convention in Chicago, and uh, they will may have to make a final decision about their nominee. Uh, so, if President Biden is seriously considering to withdraw from the race, this decision has to be taken as soon as possible. possible. Yes. And there are not, you're asking about candidates, there are not many options on the table, actually, because uh, it's not time uh, to consider somebody who's not known publicly, who's not a public figure, who doesn't have a huge, uh, um, I would say, public posture. Uh, you have to choose somebody who's already there, who's already on the stage. And frankly speaking, I do not see today any other possible candidates rather than Vice President Kamala Harris, because she's there. <coughs> she was serving to her country uh, in the, during the Biden times. Uh, she was, I must say, pretty visible when the war in Ukraine started, after the start of the Russian aggression in Ukraine. She was very visible, very active. Recently, we, somehow we lost her from our perspective. She's not very visible on our radars right now. But uh, again, there's not much time left uh, to start considering other options, other um, personalities, because the decision has to be taken right now. Uh, Democratic National Committee, you think that they were maybe not on their game in this matter? Should they have been promoting other people amongst, you know, other Democrats for maybe earlier, putting them out in front of the United States, in front of the American people, so they could uh, look, have some look, continuation right. to their party, look, right? Look, we are, we are ask, asking ourselves these questions. Mm -hmm. What happened to the U.S. political system? That at the end of the day, there are not so many maneuvers possible right now, uh, not so many scenarios which are practical and available. You have a system, the largest democratic uh, state in the, in the universe on our planet, and at the end of the day, you have Trump and Biden, Biden and Trump, and nobody else. Um, look, um, that's the system. We, we have to face the reality. We will not change the system. It's up to Americans to change the system if they see ways to really improve, to upgrade the political system. Right now, we have two, let's say, two aging guys fighting against each other. And one of them seems to be much, well, visibly much weaker than the other one. If, in fact, they do uh, propose some new candidates, some would say that this could put Democrats actually at somewhat of an advantage instead of putting in, say, a candidate uh, uh, much earlier. Because the election cycle, if you look in the United States, especially in the presidential elections, they're now about two years long. Um, so about two years into the presidency, yep. the election starts for the next election. Uh, the, the candidates yep. start coming out and the campaign starts. Um, so with such a small I guess, lead time going up to the elections, could this be an advantage for Democrats to not 
undergo the heavy media scrutiny that all the other candidates have to go undergo for two Look, years. Look, I, I still believe that that could be a positive scenario. We, we, we had cases, we had examples, we had our own case in 2020 presidential race in Poland, where we, uh, when we had the candidacy of uh, Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska to become uh, president of our country, and uh, her ranks were going down so dramatically that at the end of the day, the party decided to withdraw her and uh, to put uh, mayor of Warsaw, Rafał Trzaskowski, instead. So there are options, and sometimes uh, you, can, uh, you can imagine that there is kind of a new dynamics, new power, kind of re-engineering the final weeks of the campaign. Because with Biden, you have to promote, sorry to say, you have to promote the loser. While with a new person uh, in the game, on the table and actively engaging in the campaign, you can still imagine that somebody like, for example, Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, a woman, uh, an experienced uh, politician, uh, somebody who could easily fight against Trump, also using the language that he is using, for example, the language which is anti-women language, uh, let's, let's put it this way. So I believe that might be a right choice. It's very late but it's not too late to help Democrats win. Well, there is a short list of candidates. Um, you know, we'll have to see who can uh, gain some momentum. But first, as you mentioned, we'll have to see if President Biden takes that decision to step down. Um, now, returning here to Europe, uh, we just had the first uh, plenary session of the European Parliament. This week, um, Ursula von der Leyen has been chosen again as president of the European <laughs> Commission. But now we're waiting for the commissioners to, um, to be nominated, chosen. Um, so first of all, from Poland's perspective, are there, are there any names we should be looking at or any particular positions uh, within the commission that, that, that would be really, really good for Poland? Look, that's, that's, that's just the beginning of the process, because yes, the majority of us, uh, and I, I was one of the MEPs who supported uh, Ursula von der Leyen in yesterday's voting in Strasbourg, we decided to give her this job for the second time. But now the real, I would say, game uh, and race starts, because uh, she will construct her European government, if you like, the European Commission, but this will be not only her to decide and I would say mainly this will be up to the, to the member states, the government of the member states, uh, the European countries, to decide whom they want to pick for their commissioners and what kind of portfolio they would love to have. In case of Poland, we know perfectly well that we had the commissioner of, uh, in charge of agriculture. Uh, under during during previous uh, five years term, uh, so I do not think that we will have another commission of, uh, in charge of that area of uh, agriculture and farming. Uh, but there are many many portfolios that might be interesting for for Poland. Uh, but again, this is the game which just right now starts. The countries will show what kind of priorities they have. So it's about the personalities, the commissioners uh, or the candidates for commissioners that uh, the countries will, will come up with, but the, there are also portfolios. For Poland, just to, to, to give you a more concrete uh, answer, well, definitely interesting issue would be the enlargement, enlargement policy of the, of the EU, because we know perfectly well that Ukraine is there, Moldova is there, Western Balkans countries are there waiting to join the, join the EU. But also what uh, Ursula von der Leyen confirmed yesterday, that she will be launching a new commissioner in charge of defense uh, of Europe. We believe this is the right decision. It was discussed for um, weeks and months, and we supported the idea. We believe this is a high time for Europe to be really serious about the security and defense. Therefore, there should be a commissioner. It might be a Pole, it might be somebody from Eastern Europe. So again, this is just the beginning. Before we go very quickly, because we have about 30 seconds left, I just have to mm -hmm. ask you, many, many people have asked if Radislav Sikorsky would be interested or would he be considered for such a job as the defense commissioner if it is created? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, he might he become be a commissioner for defense. He might become also the high representative in charge of the foreign policy. Of the, of the European, there are many positions that he, he, he could uh, 
really do and, and take in, in Europe. Uh, firstly, this needs to be a decision of the government, obviously, and the prime minister. But firstly, firstly, it has to be Radek Sikorski to decide. We know that he has also other ambitions, rather domestic ambitions. And I'm talking about, about the next year's uh, race for the, for the president of Poland. So uh, first, he has to decide whether he wants to stay in domestic politics uh, I was talking to many, many folks in Brussels and Strasbourg, and they are mentioning his name among the top candidates. Mm -hmm. But again, he has to decide whether he's staying here or he wants to be active in Brussels. So he has options. Okay, Michał Kobosko, Polish MEP for Renew Europe and Poland 2050. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much.